Cheers. G'day everyone, Sonia Bernard, linked by Ink, your independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. How is everyone going? It is, what day is it? Thursday the 8th of November 2023, which means there is about 17 days till Christmas. Oh my goodness. Now I'm not even bringing you a Christmas thing today. So sorry. <laughs> um, all right, today is um, not my card class. That is next week. I do a card class every other week. And then um, on the off weeks, I try to bring you something different. Maybe it's a technique, maybe it's a fun fold, maybe it's a 3D item. Um, just something to offer a little variety and get your creativity going. So I was scouring Pinterest like I do, and I came across this stemple punch can, pun, punchin. Sorry, I'm, I'm actually half German. My mother was born and raised in Germany, but um, I don't know the language at all. I've never been there. I was born and raised in Australia. And my daughter was born and raised in America. So um, we're just traveling the world, apparently, generation by generation. So, anywho, um, she had this really cute card. And I could have gone to a different... Um, you know, a different post and found a different layout, but I just absolutely loved hers. I loved the whole concept she did. Um, it's about three years old, her video, so I've just kind of recreated it, and I'm using um, the paper that I had yesterday. Where is the paper? Oh, here it is. Hiding under the paper trimmer. You can see I've got bits and everything. This is the delightful floral paper. Whee! Um, it's very bold on one side and then very mellow on the other side um so this card that i've made for you today is quite bold it's um kind of away from what i normally do but i actually just fell in love with it so um the easiest way for me to show you the card here's the front here's a little sneak peek okay is i'm going to turn it down um because the mechanism everything just works better yes there's a mechanism okay let me flip this around so we'll have everything upside down, right side up, hopefully all being well. Let's see if we have got this straight today. Just give me a second. Is everyone excited for Christmas or are we stressed? Or what are we cooking? What's your favorite? What's your favorite cookie? Do you have a favorite cookie? Do you bake cookies or just buy cookies? I, it just depends on the year. Sometimes I bake, sometimes I just go to the store. Okay, are we kind of straight? Let's see. Alrighty. So this is actually going to a friend of mine who needs, um, or needs, <laughs> I don't know if she needs it, but <laughs> I would like to lift her spirits. Um, she's been going through some very, very deep personal issues that are very sad. So I'm going to send this to her and I'm going to hopefully cheer her up. So it is based on friendship and um, it says, I'm glad you're in my life right there and then we open it now um you can put like a white piece of paper here and and write your note here or you can just leave it blank um life is better with friends like you and then let's see we have this little pull thing what i love that we are friends i really appreciate you knowing you brings joy to my heart and i can't imagine having a better friend now you could do this for a Christmas, you could do this as a little photo book with your small photos to celebrate maybe a, um, I don't know, a graduation, a school year. I mean, think of all the possibilities. Um, Christmas, you could do just anything you can think of. You can go ahead and make this into um, a little flip, a waterfall flip book is what we're calling it, okay? So the thing with being in Germany, I was um, is everything's in metric, and I was actually raised in Australia, so I learnt metric growing up. Moved to America, and had to learn imperial, but all her measurements were in metric, and I had never converted before um, in a metric to imperial. So I spent most of yesterday trying to figure out um, the the measurements, and I. I got it, took a minute, I, I feel better for it. So all my measurements are going to be in metric 
and I will take hers and put them as well and put them in Imperial for you so you'll have both so if you're in a um, another country you know Australia New Zealand, basically any country that's not America <laughs> you can go ahead and have the measurements for this card so let's get started there are a lot of measurements I don't know if you're gonna to want to write them down or just take them from the comments um, I should have time I have a class today but it's uh, 8 20 in the morning when I'm filming this my class is not till one so I think I'll have time to write all the measurements so this I'm using very burst and we're gonna do 11 by four and a quarter and that's scored at five and a half and that's our base card okay here comes my kitty cat she likes to jump up and try to sit in front of me but sorry baby not right now she was doing this recently too in another video okay then you're gonna and it's very distracting so i may have to put her out of the room we've got our basic white card stock this is not thick you don't want to use thick because this card gets pretty thick already and pretty hefty I haven't weighed it but if I was mailing in the US I would at least put two stamps on at least um, but I'm actually gonna mail I'm actually gonna weigh this and, sh and look it up before I mail it okie dokie so three pieces of white basic basic white and those are five and three eighths by four and an eighth and then pick three pieces of designer series paper. They could all be the same. They could all be different. So I've got one on the front and then two on the on the back there. And all three of these are five and a quarter by four. And why don't I put my glasses on? That might make life easier. Oh, there we go. So we're going to get started just by gluing and layering some things and some things we're not going to layer so get one of your inside pieces and you can layer that I'll try to do it quick because her tutorial video was 52 minutes long and I've already I've already jibber jabbered on long enough for the first seven minutes <laughs> oh here comes the cat again just strolling through just keep going there we go and then your front piece is the one you're going to want. And then your last inside piece, you are going to not put that together yet. So there's, to me, there's one tricky part, and that's really making the mechanism for this card. But what we can do is just go ahead and glue this on the front of your card. So kind of like assembling as we're going and if you cut all your pieces and have them all ready to go you could actually get through this card pretty quickly um, once you do it you know once or twice I've only I did it once and then okay full disclosure I was trying to knock this video out last night got nearly all the way through finishing the card and realized I didn't plug my microphone in <sighs> done that before <laughs> no I was just tired so I was like forget it going to bed got up early okay so now we're going to take our third piece and this you are going to need your paper trimmer for and on the side here you have measurements my paper trimmer needs a clean so we are going to use this as a visual guide when you are doing this next piece okay and so I stand up for this because it just makes it easier now we don't want to cut at first I always put this over um, key you need to go thank you so at a half an inch let me double check my measurements yep at one half an inch we're gonna put that on the long side and we're gonna get our scoring tool scoring blade and we're going to go one, two, three, eight. So about here. Okay. And we're going to go down to four and seven eighths, which is about there. So we've just got this one score line. <laughs> Minus the cat tail. Turn it and do the exact same thing on the other side. So three eighths to about four and seven eighths. 
Don't worry if it's not absolutely perfect right now. Keep it, don't try not to go over. Keep it more in. If you're going to be, it's better to go short than it is to go up in here because you're going to see this piece, okay? I hope that's making sense what I'm saying. Now we're going to go three eighths. So use these, it's that you've got the longest line and then it's the um, second longest. I guess it's the third longest because there's like four different size lines. So one, two, three. And then you've got a little groove on the edge. You can line that up with this and just score like this. And I thought this was actually a really good way to do it. One, two, three. Um, because when we go to cut here in a second, it makes it a lot easier to see where you're cutting. Okay. So, yeah, see, I went a little long on that one. So now we're going to get our cutting blade, and we're going to go a half inch, go down. It's better to be in more and not go as far but now you can use those lines as a guide and we'll go three inches there I mean three three eighths of an inch and if you don't go all the way that's fine and then it's a half inch on this side and then three eighths on this side now I'm actually going to leave that short just to show you if this happens and you're like, oh no, I didn't go all the way, that's fine. Just get your paper snips, scissors, whatever you want to call them, and cut to the corners. Don't worry about it being perfect. The actual corners are going to get covered up on the inside part here. And you can just snip that, see? Now I actually did that on purpose to show you what happens if you didn't go all the way. You don't have to stress it, okay? And if you've got that little edge part there where you see that little score line, that's fine. If it's an indentation, don't even worry about it. We're going to cover that up in a minute. Right now, actually. So we're going to get our glue and just go around the edge of this frame. It's like a little picture frame. And we're trying to keep to the inside like this because when we put this piece on it doesn't go all the way to the edge so you don't want that glue all the way over going around and around and around here we go there okay and now we're going to put this on and you're going to have about a sixteenth of an inch all the way around the edges. And just give that a second. Then you're going to want your paper trimmer back out. Now, this part is mostly important if you have a directional patterned paper so that it could only go one way. Okay, this paper pretty much goes any way. But say I had a directional paper, then I would want to score on the right-hand side here and not cut that. Okay, I would cut around here, around here, around here. Wait, am I telling you wrong? I want to make sure I'm not telling you wrong. Let me look at this thing real quick. Yeah, that's right. The part that doesn't get cut is going to be on the right. But actually, a lot of this paper gets covered up. Look at this. Do we even see... We only see this paper here. So, But you see right here, we've got a score line there on the right-hand side. So you'd be looking at this little part of the paper here. So if that's directional and it's going to look funky if you've got it upside down, you want to make sure that we're going to have that right-hand side, which is where it's going to be scored. So we're going to say this right is our right-hand side. And the easiest way to do this is just flip it over. So this is where I deviate from what she did because she sat there and 
scored everything again on the other side like she went around and scored everything and then cut it you don't have to do that so we've scored this one so we're not cutting that one so all you have to do is line it up at a half inch and roll down and then at three-eighths of an inch down and then a half inch and again if you don't go all the way to the edge that's fine remember we want one side that is going to be still connected so just snip this it's coming okay I'm gonna pull that little piece off if you get a little extra piece so this is what we end up with okay we're done with the paper trimmer yay I know some some of my people who come to class they don't like when they have to cut stuff but it's okay so because you've given that a nice crease and fold you just put it through there fold it this way just crease that oh we do need the paper trimmer one more thing sorry thought you were done so bring it so you're bringing this just turn this on the left and we're going to bring that flap over and we have to do some scoring real quick I always cover my cutting blade because <laughs> you don't want to know how many times I have done this so this is score at three quarter inch score at one and a half inch here comes the cut you can't sit there move keep going <laughs> and score at two and a quarter okay so you've got three score lines right there and we will burnish them just give me one second now we're done with the paper trimmer I was telling you a porky pie I haven't I was watching a show yesterday from Australia I was like oh my gosh I haven't heard the same porky pie in years so it means when someone's telling you a lie that they're telling you a porky pie okay next we need this is called our draw card and the draw card when referring to this is this piece here this is the draw card okay the piece that actually you draw it out I guess that is the name she used so I am honoring that name <laughs> okay so we've got our cardstock and this is five by three and an eighth and then we've got white which is four and seven eighths by three so we're going down by one eighth of an inch at a time and then we've got our DSP which is four and three quarter by two and seven eighths and we're just going to quickly layer them together to oh now this is where I'm going to deviate because on hers she puts the pull tab on the back and then is securing it like this and I thought mm. now there is two circles glued together I thought you know what let's stick one of them in between that white layer right there so I'm actually going to do this I'm going to give this a little test run because I think this might make it a little more sturdy now this is a one inch retired circle punch um, but you can use whatever size you have um, if you have a die maybe you need to use a die I am going to do this I'm going to put this here and see how this works now if this doesn't work you could do it the original way as intended and I'm going to line that up visually at about center I'm just going to place that one there now I'm going to go ahead and add my layers because I feel like this might just you're not going to need that extra tape on the other side now I'm not putting both of them there because I don't want a big bump a little bump is fine just wiggle that a little bit so it's a little bit more centered and our DSP oh and with this if your measurements are a little short here we're not actually trying to layer this, this left side it doesn't matter 
where that goes. So see, you'll see this with the paper that I'm doing here. It doesn't have to line up on the left hand side. That's going to get covered. It's going to be underneath everything and you're not going to be able to see it. So don't even worry about that. So when you're placing this layer, just line it up to the edge, to that edge there. So you've got a, about a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. There we go. So you, you can see this is nicely lined up. That one we don't really care about. <laughs> no, we don't care about her. Okay, so now I'm going to take this other one and just put glue all over it and then glue that to both this and that. And this way I'm kind of putting them together. I don't know if this is the better method or not. It's just one that I thought would be stronger because now this whole white side is adhered down onto that. So it's going to make it harder for it to come off. Now we can still go ahead and put a little piece of tape here if we want that extra layer of security. This is just regular um, tape, scotch tape, whatever you want to call it. We call it sticky tape in Australia because it's sticky. <laughs> okay, now we've got our draw mechanism. Now, the way to remember this next step is this connects to the scored side, but it connects on the reverse. So you want the scored side, the reverse, and we're going to just simply, this is actually where she used tape, and I was like, this is a first for me. I don't usually use sticky tape. But double-sided tape might be a little thick. And then you've got that extra side. And we don't actually want it double-sided. Because these are literally just going to join up together. I'm going to have to stand for this one. So that's just going to go like that. Good old-fashioned sticky tape. And then... We'll just trim that off. We're not putting it on this side, we're just putting it on one side, okay? There we go. Oh my goodness, now I got tape stuck to me. So then we have this, and we're like, this is weird. It is, but that's okay. We're gonna fold it in towards the tape side. I need to trim that a little better, sorry. It's just going to bother me if I don't get it. There we go. Okay. So the place that you've put tape on, you're going to fold that in. And then that's going to fold in. So you've got it like this. Oh, this is where I probably should have um, waited. <laughs> Whoopsie. Okay. This is a little longer, so you can trim that off if you want. I think I'm just going to move my paper over. There we go. There. Just remember, it's paper. It is malleable. Mal malleable? That's a word, right? You know what I mean. Malleable? Pliable. You can, you can make it bend to your will. <laughs> and that is going to be like this. So this is going to be our our draw card like that next we're going to want glue but only on this white part just this white part not this white part sorry keep that folded down we're only going to glue around here yeah that's what i did i was like wait did i did i not glue the whole way down no i did not because if you glue that down, see what happens? If you glue that, then you can't pull this out. So we go back to our base card, open this up, make sure we've got it going the right way. Well, this tab really helps. I see I wouldn't even trim it because look, it kind of just blends into there. So even if you have a little bit sticking out of the edge, it's really going to blend in. So I would leave that. 
I saw her trimming it and I was like, why, why is she trimming it? I wouldn't even worry about it. Just make sure you don't get glue on that part. And all the way around. Then we'll just stick this onto there. If you want, you can pull that up. Just get that centered. And just one, two, three. There. Yay! Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Next, we've got more pieces. This is the fun part to me. It's like, this is where it all kind of starts coming to life. Oh, excuse me, I need some of my cup of tea. Okay, so this part, these are our pulling mechanisms, we're going to call these. And we've got layers. We've got layers one, two, three, and four. So this is your cardstock base that you're going to use. All of these are three and a half inches wide. And then we've got the biggest layer. This is layer one because this is going to go on first. So this is when you open the book. This is layer one. Layer two. Layer three. Layer four. Okay. So big to little. Three and a half by four and five eighths. Three and a half by three and three quarter for number two. Three and a half by three for number three. And three and a half by two and a quarter for number four. Now remember, I'm going to have all these measurements written down so you don't have to memorize them. Here is this little square. You've got your crease here. Don't put it on the crease. Just go through. I actually tried Google Translate, like I used the app on my phone to see if I could understand what she was saying in German. Oh, it didn't make sense. <laughs> Google Translate? Sorry, Google, no. Okay, so this is a little bit bigger than your pull card bit. Like that. I've made it bigger. You could probably go back, like I said, I didn't know the measurements. It doesn't really matter. It's going to cover it all up. Look, it all gets covered. So you can make it bigger. You could make it like if you wanted a smaller waterfall, you can make it this piece skinnier when you cut out. So, okay, there's number one. Number two. So we can just flatten that down. And the important part with this is making sure that it's all lined up. So we'll put some glue on this one. We're going to bring that as far up as you can up here because you don't want to see any of that paper underneath. Give it a good crease down. See how it's like seamless? And then we can push this in. And then make sure it's lined up this way so there's no nothing sticking out. Oh, that worked out great. Okay, next, number three. You might want to give it a minute to um, adhere. There we go. I'll give that a crease. And next we're going layer number three. Same thing, just bringing it up to cover that. And then check it again because you want to make sure it's straight and that you are lined up. I'm going to flip that like that. Check our edges, it's all lining up. Good to go. And the last one, there actually isn't a. Um, a crease so you're just gonna put a little bit of glue along here about like a half an inch wide right there there we go and we're gonna put this glue here and there we go and 
in again last but not least check our flip book make sure it's all lined up can you imagine all the cute little pictures and everything you could put in here oh my gosh oh my gosh so cute okay our layers this is for the the decorating part and finishing it up so you can use whatever you want i went a little bold with my choices as far as what i put here so the first layer oh i forgot to cut it <laughs> um did i i no i think i cut it and i put it back in the package last night it was late i was tired i was like oh i'm cleaning up and um yep i think this is it here nope that's not it i was like i'm tired i want to go to bed I can't believe I didn't turn my microphone on. No, none of these are it. Okay, I think we'll just cut a piece real quick. Life happens. So I used the big piece. I know I cut it. I'm going to find it later and I'll just be laughing at myself. Okay, now I'm just making a mess, people. Making a mess. Bear with me. This is, I don't edit, so <laughs> you get me raw. Like, this is me. There's no hiding. So if I mess this trim up now, there's no hiding that either. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to remember what we're going to This is number one. So our DSP is going to be four and a half by three and three eighths. And I'm going to double check that. Three. Yep, looks about right. So we're going to cut that at four and a half wide. And we're going to do three. And one, two, three eighths. Now, all of these, just like all of these were three and a half inches wide. All of these are going to be three and three eighths of an inch wide. So that is going to be our first piece here. And I'm just going to go ahead and glue this because I'm not doing any stamping or anything to it. So it should be fine. Good to go. I'll be putting a sentiment on it, but that's later. Okay. So that's layer one. You've just got the cardstock and the DSP. Layer two. This is going to be three and three eighths by three and three quarter for our DSP, which I chose this one, and for our um, white cardstock. Now you'll see that this is happening. That this is a little bit bigger than this. And if that happens, because we're using eighths, and I didn't want to go to sixteenths, um, because that's just a pain. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just trim off a sliver. And a sliver is about a sixteenth of an inch, okay? And then that is going to fit on there just a little bit better. It didn't even have to be that big, actually. That's what we're going to go with, a sliver. So if that happens, you can easily just trim off a little extra, okay? Just a little. Again, it's like a that one was even a little big, but we're not gonna we're not gonna obsess over it. We're not gonna be like, oh, this has to be absolutely perfect. No one's got time for that, okay? <laughs> we've got we've got busy lives, things to do, and this card takes long enough as it is. So we're not gonna be obsessive and worry that it's not exactly perfect because really the person who gets it is not going to notice okay like i may notice but that's okay there we go now don't if you're going to stamp this one don't glue it down yet okay number three we've got our dsp and our white cardstock again and so just like check them first make sure they look good these are three and three eighths wide and then three inch i mean high three and three eighths high and then three inches wide okay 
So again, that matters if you've got directional paper. Just keep an eye out on what you're cutting. Top to bottom is three and three eighths. The height, whichever you want to call it, and the width is three inches. I should put that when I'm doing the um, typing them up. It might help. Again, we're not going to those exact same sizes. We're not going to do that yet. And then lucky last, our fourth side, we've got our DSP, which is three and three eighths wide. And then it's two and an eighth um, thin. Now this one, I'm actually going to be stamping on the DSP. So I'm not going to be stamping on the white piece, the basic white. And the, again, the cardstock color I'm using is Berry Burst. It's such a fun color. And you just grab a color that coordinates with your pack of paper, which, you know, when you get the Stampin' Up! paper, it, it coordinates with, tells you what it coordinates with on the back. So now to decorate, and you can decorate any which way you want. Basically, look, we've got the card done. Look at this. It's basically done. It's a flip book. And then one, two, three. So we just got finishing touches. We're not even using any ribbon or anything like that. You could if you wanted to. You could put some ribbon around here and then tie a bow at the front. It is going to make it even thicker than what it is. So keep that in mind, especially if you're mailing this. So these dies, Wonderful Thoughts dies. I need to pull these out. I, I was actually going through my catalog and I was looking and I was like, oh, there's a flower in there. And then I was like, wait, there's hearts in here. I have not used this one. Um, it coordinates with the um, Wonderful Thoughts words, so the bubbles, right? But then you've got hearts, you've got these labels here that you could use for sentiments as well. I mean, oh my goodness. And then it has this really cute, fun flower. So I die cut that out. And again, I used um, her layout for inspiration. She had done something a little similar but different here. She had taken this white piece and die cut it. So it kind of had a peekaboo look through, but we don't have a die like that now. So I just use this one because her video is a little older. And let's put that down. I think that's kind of cute. Just kind of like highlighting the die. I like it. Okay. Next, I got the Berry Burst ink, and I've used quite a few stamp sets for sentiments. Um, you could stick with one stamp set, but to go, you know, to create a theme, I did need extra. So this is um, So Sincere, and Knowing You Brings Joy to My Heart. I'm going to stamp this straight onto the DSP. I'm going to stand for this one. I'm going to center that. Hopefully it's good because there's no flipping this one over. Yes. And I love how you can stamp on DSP. And sometimes, you know, you might forget that you can actually do that. It's like, it's allowed. You're allowed to stamp on your DSP. Use it. And especially with this pack, there's a lot on the back that's like that. It's very stampable. We're going we're gonna to use that as a word. We're going to say that's stampable it must be a word right stampable okay so now we're just going to go ahead and glue this part and that gives it that makes it flat too to make it less bulky i know she did put one here and um put dimensionals on it i was like i'm not going to because i don't want it as bulky and then our next two pieces, we'll start with the big one, and I will get a mat for this. Okay, because we're going to do a little splatter technique, and then we are going to get the coordinating stamp set that goes with all this paper and everything, and it's called Translucent Florals, and I'm going to use this leaf one. And I'm also going to use 
this one here. No, that one in a minute. One of these two. Doesn't really matter, actually. So, we're going to get our parakeet party. And we're going to stamp this leaf. And put that right there. I think I'll put this more at an angle. It's really cute. It's supposed to have that variation in color. So if you get it and you're like, wait, it's not even. It's not supposed to be. Then we've got our Calypso, Calypso Coral. And let me find the stamp set. We've got so many. <laughs> um, it's going to be this one. So this is Country Bouquet. And I've used, I love that we are friends here. And we're going to stamp that in Calypso Coral. And I've just put it about the center. Now, like that, it looks kind of bare. It looks, if we, if you want to use the word naked, <laughs> it's like barren. So, to, to change that, get your blender pen. This is um, Dark Pretty Peacock. Get the, the large end, and all we're going to do is flick. Because very softly, you don't want to do it hard because you don't want to ruin the nib. And we're just going to flip. You might have to change direction. And I don't mind that it's gone on top of the leaf. Okay. And it kind of mimics some of the paper in here. So... Now, this is going to go on layer two, right there. So it doesn't have to be super fancy. I mean, that didn't take long at all, right? So if you're doing a bunch of these, you would just line them all up, stamp, stamp, and then just go along and flick them all. Oh, here comes Libby again. She's inspecting. Let's see where we're at. Okay, you must pass. The people need to see Libby. Off we go. Thank you, dear. So that's number three. And then, I mean, yeah, that's three. That's two. This is number three. So with this one, just make sure we've got it the right way. We're going to go ahead and get our fresh freesia. And we're going to get this stamp. Now you could use anything that you have. And we're going to get the corner. And just stamp this corner and stamp this corner just to give it a little pattern. And the last one I actually went in a little bigger, but you know that's okay, no one's gonna know. Then we're gonna get pretty peacock and we're gonna get timeless arrangements. And we're using I really appreciate you. I think people do need to know that they are appreciated and loved. Now, this could be like, if you want to make this for a Mother's Day card, this would be a great Mother's Day card. But again, this is an online exclusive paper, so I don't know how long it will be online. It is currently there, but if you want it, don't wait for it. You know our products go flying off the shelves sometimes, we never know. Um, with our online exclusives, we don't know the limits of how many they have. We don't know if, if they'll order more. That is one thing that is a mystery. It's a new thing Stampin' Up's doing. And so it does put, you know, us demonstrators at a bit of a disadvantage because we know as much as you when it comes to online exclusives. We do get a little sneak peek of a pre-order. Um, but other than that... Okay, now we are going to jazz this up a little bit with some gems here in a minute. So, let's go ahead and get our um, embellishments done. And I have cut out two pieces using the um, deckled rectangles dies. And that's just using the smallest one here. And one is for the front and one's for the inside. So the front, this is another online exclusive that just came out, Feathered Flight, and it's actually really cute. I think 
that um, like you might look at it and go ducks, but you can make some really cute cards with that. And we're going to get again the pretty peacock and I'm glad you're in my life. And we're just going to go ahead and put that in. Hopefully perfect. Okay. Well, it's not perfect, but <laughs> okay. Then we're going to get a sponge dover and just that little edge. I'm going to sponge that edge. Here comes Libby again. You got to watch her because she'll eat your cardstock. She'll grab this and start eating it and then it's ruined. No, don't go in the ink pad, Libby. Libby Lou. And we're just going to give that a good old, it's an oldie but a goodie technique. And it kind of highlights the rugged edge there too. So we like that. Oh, you're just going to sit and watch this. Oh my goodness. And since we've got this out, we'll go ahead and we'll get um, from By My Side, Life is Better with Friends Like You. And we'll go ahead and give that a stamp since we're here. And again, that's in the Pretty Peacock. Then we're going to do the, the flicking technique. I don't know what to call it. Get our flicker, move this because we don't want to, like you can see it can go quite far. And this is um, Dark Berry Burst. Let me know. <laughs> She's literally sitting in front of me. I'm working over the cat right now. <laughs> oh, oh no, Libby, you've got to go. Go see what the dog's barking at. There we go. Okay, so we're going to get, put the tail on that side. We're going to again flick. And it does go really far, so you do want to mat down, okay? Because you see it's all the way out here when you're doing that. Okay, so we've got our two. Then we need, I have gone ahead and I'm just going to show you real quick. Um, I've already fussy cut it, so just on a piece of basic white, I've got from Garden Meadow, which is another online exclusive. Um, I can't imagine having a better friend. And all I did was stamp that on. This was the piece we cut out in the middle, so you can use this middle piece to cut out, like to stamp that, and then cut these pieces out. That'll all work like right that. Oh, look. That almost makes a card. Oh, I just got inspired. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Okay. We may have to figure out something there. Okay. So now we've got all those. And then I've just fussy cut around. So we've got those. Then, of course, we're going to get our trusty dimensionals. I think I can sit back down because my cat has stepped over to the side. And we still are going to get some bling and bling this up. And these two we're going to put dimensionals. And you'll see because the front, it doesn't matter if we've got dimensionals or not. And I'm going to put that bottom left. You can put it wherever you want, top right. And then this one is, I did put top right. I'm just copying the one I did before. There we go. And then we've got that, that, that. And we're going to pull this all the way out. And we're going to use just our liquid glue. And that one, you definitely want to make sure that that's flat. Because that needs to slide in and out. So I can't imagine having a better friend. Okay, we're almost done. All we need now is some bling. Okay, so I did some, slide that back in. I did some bling for the front. I got my berry burst and I got one, two, three small ones, a medium and a large. You may want to let these dry for a second. 
And I'm going to actually need three more small ones. One, two, three. Because sometimes when you pick them up and then you put them down, if they're not dry, they will get a little smudge on them. And then we're going to use, this is Pretty Peacock, Dark Pretty Peacock. We're going to go a big one, a medium one, and a small one. And then we're going to also use Calypso Coral. And we're going to do a big one, medium, and a small. And oh, more pink. I'm flipping through the book to see what I did last time. And I used a medium and two small. Okay. So now we get the take your pick tool. So it's got this gunky stuff on the end. And you can actually, I don't know if you can see, but it's actually got some of the ink because I did not let that dry long enough yesterday. Libby's back. Libby, you can't sit there right now. Thank you. Okay. So we're just gonna you just kind of push. I'm gonna put one there. I'm gonna grab a small one, put it there. And just, just decorate these however you want. Um I did get one and I stuck it in the middle of the flower because I thought it looked cute. And then just wherever you want. And I'm going to do a group of five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. I don't want that on that flower though. Oh, well, you know what? Don't be picky. Okay. <laughs> then we're going to do again some little pink ones. And if it gets, don't pull that off yet. You can, you can use that little sticky part. Just move it around. So we'll put three just random. There we go. Get off. There we go. One, two, three. And then next we'll use the pretty peacock ones. Get that big one. Almost done. I'm actually going to put these a little different than what I did last time. Okay, in a line which you probably don't want to do. It's better when you put them this way. But we're just rolling with that. This one, we're using the Calypso Coral. So I'm going to put that one there. And then almost. Oh, we're, we're so close. And then the last one, I actually did put like bling here and bling here, and it just did not look good. So I don't recommend blinging both sides. Then it was, your eyes were struggling for the visual. It's like, which way do I look? Distracted by all the bling. So I would just put on this side or on that side. And I think this side, because that side is already filled in with just the natural color of the cardstock. And there we have it. We did it in 53 minutes. Woohoo! Okay. There you go. There is your waterfall flip book card using a lot of stamp sets, one packet of paper, one color card stock. Whoops. And there you go. It's really fun to play with. So whoever you send it to is really going to enjoy it. And I would actually play with it a little bit before you send it to kind of Loosen that paper up where the fibers need to break down to bend. And look at that. It's just in and out. Oh, it's fun. Okay, I hope you've loved this card. I hope you give it a go. I've got two of them now. One is going to a very special friend um, who just definitely needs a pick-me-up in life. And the other one I'm just going to keep as my little sample card. So there. I hope you love it. I'm going to put all the directions in the um in the comments and i think i'll throw this up on my blog too i've got time it's only nine o'clock in the morning yes i can take photos and everything now okay guys i hope you loved it um thank you again if you're watching thank you for watching i really do appreciate it and i hope i inspire you and i hope you go out there and um give some of these things that i show you a try um, because it feels great and it's going to feel even better when you give it to someone and they open it 
and they just are like, oh, you made this? That's what's going to happen. And it's also going to bring them joy because they're going to feel so special that you took the time to actually sit down and create something from the heart. It means so much more than running to the store and spending $8 on a card that is going to go in the trash later. This is probably something they'll hold on to and really enjoy. Okay, I hope you love it. I'm getting all sentimental and mushy. <laughs> um, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please go ahead and subscribe. Um, and thanks again for watching. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Linked by Ink. And I'm here every Thursday, 3 p.m. on YouTube. And I also post over on my Facebook page. Take care, guys. Have a safe week. Bye.